Hello, everyone. You are either listening today on the Fancy Scientist podcast or my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Stephanie Shuttler, and I'm all about empowering scientists, inspiring people to conserve our natural world. And today I have a special guest. His name is Kyle Burgess. Is that how you say your last name? Okay, great. Yeah, Kyle Burgess. And, and how, how I got in touch with Kyle is that I created a YouTube video last week about this mountain lion video that went viral. And if you haven't seen it, we'll describe it. Um, but I made a YouTube video correcting um, some of the misinformation out there that the media took from the video. And Kyle reached out to me, he saw my YouTube video and was interested in help correcting those messages as well. And that brings us here today. So welcome, Kyle. I'm so excited to have you. Thanks for having me. This will be, this will be fun. Yes. <laughs> now, I purposely have not researched you that much or, or even the story. Really, all I saw was the, was the video on Twitter. So I don't even know if I saw the whole video. So why don't you take everyone through what happened exactly? Okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, so I'm an avid trail runner, go trail running, go hiking, go backpacking, love spending my time in the, in, outside in the outdoors. Kind of what happened was I was going on a trail run. I was doing a full loop. So I was gonna end up going one side of the canyon, going to another canyon, coming down and cutting across. And this is in Utah, right? Correct. Yeah. Sorry. This is, in, this is in Provo, Utah. And so kind of do that loop, went through, did half the loop, probably about seven miles in is kind of when I encountered some wildlife. Uh, majority of the time, the wildlife is not on the trail. I usually just pull my phone out and take some videos of wildlife as I'm either passing, uh, not going out of my way to go closer, but just as I'm passing on the trail, because mm -hmm. uh, I need to go either that way or turn around and go another seven miles the other way. Uh, so I just pulled my phone out thinking they were bobcats. I've seen bobcats multiple times on the trail. They're very non-confrontational, what I've experienced. Uh, they kind of see me, they poke their little ears up and then they're out of there. Uh, but this time was a lot different, obviously, as I kind of take a few steps forward to these baby cubs you see on the trail. So you thought uh, they, were, they were baby bobcats? I thought they were baby bobcats. And there were what, um, like three, three of them or? There, so them? when I originally popped up on them, I'm running down this hill, I ran into four. Oh, okay. And they just kind of dispersed and then the two didn't really see me. So then I kind of, that's when I pulled my phone out. This is before I see mom. This is before, yeah, knew they were cougars because I've never seen a cougar before, never encountered cougars and don't know a lot about cougars. Okay, so you're running on this trail. And then in the cats, like they scatter in front of you. Is that what happens? So you're running towards them by accident. So running towards them because I'm going down the trail. Yeah. I'm okay. Going in that direction, if that makes sense. And then you just kind of stopped. Did you go closer to the kittens at that point? Uh, so I stopped, pulled my phone out. I was like, sweet. Maybe I can show my family some wildlife that I see on the trail. I do that quite often just because I'm on the mm -hmm. trail out in the mountains and stuff like that. Um, I did take a few steps forward before I didn't realize, okay, these are not bobcats and these are cougars, which is super cool because I've never seen them in real life. But then I also thought in my head, oh crap, mama has to be near. But at that point when I did that whole realization in my head, it was way too late and mama was already, mama was already coming after me. So how close did you get to her? So- Or did she come to you? <laughs> yeah, she came to me practically. <laughs> Uh, so what happened was as I'm backing up, one of the little kittens actually starts running towards me because mama's running towards me and then the little baby kitten doesn't know what's happening and runs towards me. And I'm backing up as fast as I can, getting away from the kittens and obviously trying to get away from the mama cougar. Uh, and so majority of the video, we, t we stayed at a distance between 10 and 15 feet, but there is a point in when she's doing her bluff charges, her little pounces. Um, that she does get within like four to five feet of me. Wow. Yeah, if you haven't seen the video, I'll post it in the show notes and in the YouTube description. It is an incredible display of aggression on behalf of, of the cougar. Um, so 
so you had your phone out originally and you were videoing. So you just decided to keep videoing the record the whole time. That's how you got your yeah. phone out. So yeah, I just decided to keep recording. Honestly, I almost kind of forgot about my phone at that point in time. And as well as kind of thinking like, well, I'm already videoing. Why stop? Um, it wasn't my intention to like, to be like, Oh, look, I'm going to get a whole bunch of views on YouTube or anything like that. I didn't really know what I had until I posted it, which was super crazy for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been one on social media, like crazy. I haven't been like super active. So when I posted this and some of my buddies kind of like text me and stuff like that saying, well, your video is up to now like a thousand views. And I was like, holy cow, that's, that's insane. But. And this was your YouTube video. You post, you posted it to your YouTube channel. So I originally right? posted to my Instagram, my IGTV originally. Oh, okay. And then once and stuff got, I got big, I then went to YouTube. Okay. So, so you're backing up from the mountain lion and, uh, and, oh, sorry. When I say cougar, mountain lion, and puma, they're all the same animal. So sometimes I interchange them. So you're backing up. And how long would you say that she followed you for or advanced I, towards you? Yeah, I want to say she was, she was following me for a good I don't know, 150 feet, yeah. maybe a little less. And what was going through your head during this time? <laughs> there were so many emotions. Like, I know the first emotion was, oh, crap, like, Kyle effed up he's now in trouble and he's scared and he needs to do something and he got to get out of the situation another another feeling i had was holy cow that's a cougar that is so cool like <laughs> i've i've been on trails and in, in the mountains for so long i don't really expect to see cougars because you kind of hear about them and you know they're cats and so cats are very stealthy and don't really want confrontation for the most part. So to actually see one in real life, 10 to 15 feet away from me was just insane. So I had this so many different emotions going on in my head, obviously the scared factor and the exciting factor, but the scaring and me being scared was definitely probably more dominant. <laughs> and then you said, I don't want to die today, right? That's, that's what you yeah. said? Yeah. Did, did you really think you were going to die? Did you really think that was a possibility? Or were you thinking, okay, this is just a really aggressive bluff charge? So honestly, like I've heard about mountain, mountain lion attacks multiple times, just kind of being in this community of hiking and stuff like that. And I didn't know what she was actually trying to do. Because I'm not no expert on cougars. I'm just a hiker, just a trail runner. And so... I did think I was going to get hurt. That's for sure. I was like, man, okay, well, what's going to happen? Well, I'm either going to end up really mauled or even, yeah, possibly dying. So it, the thought definitely did pass my head. Yeah, it definitely would have passed my head too. <laughs> I've had interactions with, with big, scary wildlife before, but never predators. My, my scary interactions were with elephants where – they charged me, but elephants you can run from. So um, for those of you out there who don't know, with predators, you're not supposed to run. And di did you know actually how you were supposed to behave if a mountain lion came after you? So not necessarily. I mean, growing up here in Utah, I was part of the Boy Scouts when I was younger. And in the Boy Scouts, when you go to Boy Scouts campouts and stuff like that, the leaders do teach you kind of like, hey, if you do come upon an animal, act big and scary and the animal should go away and so i kind of just almost almost instinct said okay be big and scary so i threw my arms up that's why i was kind of making those dog sounds and growling sounds just to make myself a little bit scarier to hopefully scare the the cougar away and you also mentioned in the video that you wished you brought your gun uh, is that, did you want to actually shoot to kill the cougar or just shoot in the air and scare it away? Um, that probably would have been a really, probably in the moment type of uh, decision that I would have made. But my intention, I think of it now, if I did have my, my firearm with me, it would have been a shot either in the ground to scare it away. I don't like shooting in the air because I don't know where my bullet's going. But yeah, it would have been definitely to the side of me just into the ground. So hopefully yeah, scare you, the animal away. 
you can probably tell I don't own a gun because I'm saying shoot. In the air. <laughs> so actually, when um, I camped in Kenya for the first time, we had a, a very, I was in a study abroad program and we had a very large group of students and lions came to our campsite because there was wow. some water overflowing from the bathroom. So they came to drink water and you have to have Kenya Wildlife Service guards with you when you camp. And they, of course, have guns. And they shot bullets to try to scare the lions away. And I thought the lions were going to, like, disperse, be scared out of their minds. And they just, like, looked at us. <laughs> no way. Wow. <laughs> Eventually, they went off. They had to keep shooting. Um, but, but yeah, it, I, I thought they were going to be really scared. But those animals, well, actually, no, this was, this was uh, Savo West National Park. So this is a really big park. They're not as used to tourists. Um, so, so, yeah. Um, but but yeah, I would have I would have felt more comfortable having something that I could make a big scary noise with with too. So do you regret any of the decisions you made during this encounter? Uh, not necessarily, just because I I got out without being hurt, and the mountain lion got away without getting hurt and went back to her cubs. Yeah, and. I, so I have a big scientist, wildlife, biologist following, and mm -hmm. um, some of them were very angry towards you, <laughs> and some of them were, um, were nice to you as well, because not everyone knows how to act around animals, and of mm -hmm. course you came across those, those cubs by accident. Um, but honestly, a lot of the things that you did were, were correct, like, like yelling towards the animal and making yourself look big. That, I mean, that was hard to tell from the video, um, sure. but um, people recommended that you should have thrown something too. Did you, I think you did though throw something at some point in the video. So that was at the very end, because uh, every other time that I either tried to like stoop down to grab a rock or even made myself just a tiny bit smaller, uh, that's when she did her pounces. And so yeah. I, I was like, okay, I just need to stay up, stay big, so that she doesn't do her pounces and I'll wait for a better time for me to actually bend down and grab a rock. Yeah, because if you bend down, that can actually trigger them. So um, people were thinking maybe you had like something on you you could throw, even your phone. I wouldn't have thrown my phone because I wouldn't want to have been without my phone. I don't know if you get service out there or not, but you know, in case you were injured. So, Okay, so you posted this video on your Instagram and YouTube, and it took off. What, what are you, if anything, like most upset about that people are saying about the video or the media has said about the video or you as a person? So to be completely honest, when I posted it, obviously, I don't know a lot. I didn't know. I'll correct myself. I didn't know a lot about mountain lions or cougars. And... Yeah, I didn't know she wasn't attacking me. I didn't know she was not stalking or, or everything like the news agencies as a thing, right? So now that I do know, whenever I do have do, oh, excuse me, whenever I've done interviews, uh, I've kind of like corrected them saying, no, I didn't think she was out to kill me, but she was definitely trying to get me away from her cubs. And she was doing what she was supposed to do. And I think it's kind of like my point now that I'm trying to get across talking to you and other people doing other interviews and other podcasts is saying yes they're dangerous animals but they're not out to kill us right I mean, yeah absolutely and that's the thing that I was worried about from seeing this video is you you don't know the context of it and if you're a wildlife biologist you you know can tell that's really not how mountain lions hunt they they do so stealthily and they don't really go after humans um there's very mm -hmm. very very few attacks you're extremely lucky to see a mountain lion um like you said this is your first time and you run there um frequently um, but that's the thing that I worry about is that a lot of the media headlines were saying this animal was stalking you and yes, it was advancing towards you, but it wasn't like stalking to kill you unless, unless you were going to mess with her babies. Correct. She's just pushing me away. Yeah. Um, the one thing though, that I think maybe a lot of people don't know is like you said that she wasn't hurt in the process. 
Um, and this is something that I just encourage everyone to do when they're around animals and their and their babies is you should always keep a distance because even though they are doing an aggressive display and like there's no physical contact between either of you, she has to expend a lot of energy doing that display. It's, it's what we call is very costly to the animal. And she also had to leave her babies too. So potentially, potentially exposing them to other predators, but um, really the display was like so impressive and so probably draining for her that it could it impact her ability to hunt later on. So that's something that people should, should keep in mind whenever they see animal babies that um, going closer towards them will freak the mom out. And I always like to say any animal can be dangerous if it wants to be. Um, like I did a lot of uh, research around schools, actually. I worked with kids setting up camera traps around schools. And they would always ask me what animal I was scared of the most. And I would say the, the Canada goose. <laughs> if you ever see a Canada goose with babies, they definitely hiss at you and they can go after you. <laughs> That's funny. A lot of people wanted to know, actually, um, if you have a cat at home. I don't have cat. I have a little dog. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised since you thought they were bobcats that you would still approach, go closer because I have, I have four rescue cats and they can be really nasty when they want to be too. And I think of a bobcat, I mean, they're not huge cats, but they're definitely bigger than house cats. So I think of them as definitely being able to, to mess you up as well. Yeah, for sure. I've actually <laughs> learned that now that bobcats can actually be very aggressive animals. Uh, but I've just, I've had two encounters so far in my trail running and it's been a very far distance. Like it's been like within 15, 20 feet from the trail. And I've recently posted a video actually of one of my encounters on my Instagram. I'm just kind of saying, Hey, look, this is what I thought it was type deal. And it's, yeah, I zoom in and you can tell it's a bobcat because the little fur on the ears and stuff. So it's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, so you're right. I... Definitely shouldn't have approached the babies, but yeah, in the, in my thought process was like, I'm just heading down seven, seven miles in my trail, my yeah. trail run and just kind of heading down that way. And most wildlife just runs away. I guess it's something I don't necessarily think about when I'm on the trail. That wildlife runs away or that it might not run away. It might not run away. Yeah. Actually, I, my trail is very different than your trail. I have a greenway near my house. And oh. the animals are so used to people. There are deer. I know exactly like where they go. And I have two dogs and my dogs will be barking like crazy at the deer and they just stand and look at us. And we're just like, I don't know, 10, 15 feet away from them. Like they just don't wow. care. <laughs> they, know, they know that I have them on leashes. So what do you think that people took away from this video? Well, one is obviously we kind of need to take probably what they took away is like animals are dangerous to be honest with you most did people you read don't have, comments about like people wanting the mountain lion dead did you see anything like that or is there is there like a talk in your community of of going out and killing that mountain lion um i've heard of people saying that's what could happen um i haven't heard of anything happening when i talked to the wildlife guys they said they went out and tried to track it down for a little bit to see where it could have gone. Mm -hmm. And they said they didn't find anything. Um, they did, they have set up uh, some cameras to see if they can see it later on. Um, I, I hope they don't go kill it. That's a sweet animal. Yeah. Why I'm curious. Yeah. Why did they set up can cameras just to maybe monitor it? Cause it's so close to the trail with other people. Possibly. Um, the people that were sending up the camera was actually the Mountain Lion Foundation. Oh, okay. So then they're definitely on the side of the Mountain Lion. <laughs> yeah. I actually <laughs> took the Mountain Lion Foundation up there today to kind of show them where I, where I was and stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah. So they're probably, they're probably actually maybe really interested in the, in the kittens as well and, and watching them grow up. Next, I heard it's like not common to get kittens on the cameras. It's not common. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually, I guess so. It's not because we have, so I'm, I'm part of the e-mammal project, which is a 
we're basically a large database of camera trap photos and we run a lot of our own camera trap projects and we have my projects take place in Suriname and Mexico and then um, other people's projects take place in the Western United States. So we do see mountain lions on the camera traps. But yeah, I guess I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen any babies actually. Um, so, but, but in my, I work with, like I said, I work with schools and in, in, in Suriname, I, our camera traps are in a very small protected area. So it's actually pretty surprising that we had mountain lions there. Um, so maybe that's why, but, um, but. Yeah, no, I, I haven't seen them on camera trap. We have had bob bobcat kittens though, on oh, cool. on camera traps, um, but they're but they're a lot more common. So somebody, I asked for, I asked for people for questions, and mm -hmm. um, someone or a couple of people wanted to know: Have you done anything to learn more about cougars and their threats? So yeah, what I actually did, kind of like following the video after it posted, and I saw like the good and the bad comments of happening. I was like thinking, talking to my wife, I was like, Hey, what, well, what am I going to do to kind of make this into a positive experience? Hopefully people can learn from it because yeah, I mean, especially being a trail runner, I really didn't know too much about mountain mm -hmm. lions. Um, I knew they existed, but I didn't know kind of everything about them. So what I did was actually contact mountain lion foundation and the Cougar Conservancy and kind of set some, some stuff up with them. Um, on my website, I'm actually made a website selling some shirts and a lot of those profits are going towards those guys, towards those nonprofits to kind of help hopefully, yeah, do some better research and hopefully point a lot of people in a better direction to learn more about wildlife and what they can do to help save wildlife or maintain wildlife. And what, what was the reaction to you? Um, like, like how did those organizations respond to uh, this video going viral? So I've heard a lot of different things saying, obviously a lot of people would have preferred me not to post a video. Uh, if I would have known how much it would have blown up, I, yeah, maybe I wouldn't have, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, but that's going to the past and we're over and past that now, right? So I know for sure, I don't know exactly for sure, but yeah, I, there's been different comments saying, yeah, you shouldn't have posted a video. You should have just kind of kept it to yourself, this and that. But there's always what you could have and should have done, I guess, with any instance. Do you regret posting the video? I don't regret posting the video. I know mm -hmm. people can learn from it. I think a lot of uh, biologists, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I've talked to other biologists and they're like, amazed by the video of like how long she followed me for and her bluff charges and everything. Yeah, I mean, it is really incredible. I don't think I've ever seen a, a video like that, although I haven't particularly searched for that. I'm sure stuff like that exists out there. But um, yeah, I've certainly never seen a mountain lion act like that. And yeah, hopefully we can use it as a learning opportunity. And, and that's what I'm trying to do here and encourage people mm -hmm especially because we're in such a selfie culture where people want to not only see wildlife, but get pictures of, or even just take pictures of wildlife. They want to be in the pictures to kind of prove that they're there with them. And um, for lots of animals, it's just really not worth it because um, as I mentioned before, they get stressed out, they get harassed. There's cases where animals even die. There's, um, there were some, beach incidences where people caught a baby dolphin and they were like all posing and taking selfies with it and it died because um they put their finger in the blowhole um oh, so wow. it suffocated i know so it was really terrible so hopefully we can get um some more information out about it one thing um i do think maybe you can do now in um, and, and, you know, you can't take down your video or e even if you did take it down, there's tons of, of it's, it's um, out there. yeah, exactly. There's tons of people who have their own version of it out there. But one thing you could do for your YouTube video is I did notice your, your title is Cougar Attack and, and you say that Mountain Lion stalks me. You could change that, that title to be, um, you know, something like Mama Cougar defends her kittens after I stumbled across them. Um, and you might even want to put uh, cards in YouTube. I don't know if you've ever done that before, but they're like little notifications. So, so when people are watching the video, 
they pop up and, and people can read them because a lot of people don't read, or I don't know, I'm assuming a lot of people don't read the description. Um, and yeah. you do, you do point that out in the description, but, um, yeah, that's, that's maybe something else you could do. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely getting the hang of all the YouTube stuff. I actually had a buddy help me post it. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty new to you, to YouTube too. Um, I've only been doing it for a year and I keep, I keep learning maybe a little bit over a year. Yeah. This is my um, first YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Um, do you, are there any other misconceptions or errors that you found people said from the video besides like stalking or, um, so like people thought like the mountain lion was really trying to hunt you. Yeah. I've heard almost everything and anything you can think of, right? What I should have done, what I could have done differently. And yeah, maybe if I was the perfect person, maybe I could have handled it a lot differently, but yeah, I make mistakes. So yeah, I can't say if I would have done anything differently just because I know that, yeah, at least the kitten is alive, uh, the mama cougar is alive and hopefully back with her, with her kittens. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people are, you know, they just jump to conclusions. And I'm sure a lot of people honestly would have probably reacted worse than you did in, in that situation. At least you did back up slowly and, and yell. Um, so yeah, again, if that ever does happen to any of you in the wild, um, really what you're supposed to do with predators is, is, is walk slowly, keep eye contact with them and make yourself look big, clap your hands, yell at them. Um, and talk to them too, which is, which is what you did. So are you, are you still running then in, on this trail? Yes, I am. Sorry. My headphones kind of went out on me. Disconnected. It's okay. You can just keep talking. Um, okay. Yeah. I have gone back to the trail. I love running the trail. It's hasn't scared me away. Like you said, cougar encounters are very, very uncommon. Yeah really now it's just kind of just being more cautious on when I see wildlife and hopefully when yeah. I do see wildlife I can make more loud sounds when I'm running kind of scruffing my feet down maybe uh just to see if I can scare them away before I get close to them. Have a lot of people associated you with the video um because you're, you you don't show your face in the video so have a lot of people like realized it is you? And no, it's kind of going, it's, it's gone both ways just because, yeah, you only see my face in the video for a very short time. Uh, the only reason people have kind of recognized it to me is because of how many uh, news stations have posted my face everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Well, I give you credit for not being scared because after I was charged by elephants, I was like, I was scared of them and I studied them. So I was embarrassed. <laughs> I was like scared to go. But the elephants in the, in the, in the park that I studied them, they were notorious for being aggressive. And actually oh, wow. last two podcast episodes ago, I, I talked about my, my, one of my charges and one of my other crazy experiences. But I remember I talked to this elephant researcher or he was just, a, he actually, he did study elephants, but he studied just more of the wildlife in Gabon in general. And I told him, I was an elephant biologist, but I'm really scared of the elephants. And he's like, you know, people in low pay, they either have like one of two reactions. They either like run from the elephants and they get excited and it's like an adrenaline high for them and they get like addicted to it or <laughs> they are scared out of their minds. So I, I was in the latter, latter category. I was scared, but I did go back for a second field season and I did complete it. Um, Awesome. Like I said, it's, it's hard when you can't run. When you can run, it's, it's much easier. I've, I've, I've always been scared of um, seeing a gorilla in the wild when I worked in Gabon because they're not habituated. They're very wild. And if you see one, you can't run and you have to crouch down and pretend you're eating leaves so that you can be very submissive to them. Um, wow. Yeah. So that happened actually to one of my... Um, another researcher there. So he had this, this, this gorilla stayed with them for like an hour, but yeah, if you like make any sudden wrong moves, they can, they can attack you pretty badly. Uh, yeah. Gorilla. I think that'd be more scary than a cougar. 
Yeah, or bears too. I've known people who have studied bears, uh, especially grizzly bears in um, in the West. I can't remember where, but um, yeah, they do a lot of false charges and you have to just like stand still and they stand come up still. to you and they sniff you. And Oof. I mean, I can't even imagine. But in general, there's, there's very few animals out there that like will actively hunt and want to kill people. The only ones that I know about are um, really polar bears. That's the only one I've heard that like they'll actually like go out and try to seek people out. But most other animals, if there is a, a deadly or potentially deadly interaction, it's usually because like one didn't know the other one was there. Um, and even for predators, like in, in uh, Kenya, there's this, this famous story of these man-eating lions because it's actually really er rare for, for lions to, to eat men. Um, and they thought it was because they were older and they couldn't hunt as well. And then they like somehow acquire the taste for it. But yeah, so people out there, you don't, you don't have to be scared of wildlife. Um, or mountain lions, but if you do see babies, then then be cautious. Go, go the other way. <laughs> slowly though, back up slowly. Don't run. Yeah. Don't turn your back and don't run. Do you do you have anything else that you wanted to get out there that you wanted to tell um, the world? There's people all over the world that listen to this podcast and watch this channel. Yeah, for sure. Like I know I've kind of said this, but I hope we can actually take the video and make it a positive experience. I know there's a lot of things, a lot of negative out there, but that's with anything. So as long as we can take it, kind of learn from this, yeah, and yeah, use the video for our advantage almost, and kind of say, okay, look, look how this happened, and hopefully, be better at kind of human and animal interactions. And so, I hope that goes a lot. I hope with me doing these types of podcasts and these types of like interviews with people will get that message across. And are you in a really rural area of Utah, like where you were running? Is it pretty rural around there? Yeah, uh, Provo's pretty big. And I was only two miles from the trailhead. So it's mm -hmm. a very popular area to go, especially when you're only going two miles up. That's yeah. pretty, pretty common for a lot of people that do go up that trail. Yeah, and for, for mountain lions, um, at least in the United States, they um, do live closely with people. Like they live like literally right outside of LA. There's a, I don't know if you've seen that image, but there's a famous image of um, a mountain lion that was studied and it was caught in this camera trap in front of the Hollywood sign. There's a Hollywood sign in, in the Isn't backdrop. That, uh, P22? Yeah. Yeah. That's the the, the um, name the of number it, yeah the number that they gave it yeah so um so there are i mean and, and it's really amazing because they so they track the animal they have a they have a collar on it they know where all the locations are and it's really quite amazing like how close the mountain lions get to people because there's people that recreate in that area all the time but like you know no one sees it so so they are out there they probably see you but <laughs> you don't see them and that can that can be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We don't. We all know what happens when the mountain lion sees you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can it can work out if if it sees you from a distance, and it doesn't always have to be that close. Yeah, for sure. But wow, when, I mean, what an incredible experience! You know, if you have kids, you can definitely tell them this, and we'll show them the video. Do you have any yeah. questions for me or any wildlife biologist out there? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I know, I mean, I kind of heard you in your, your YouTube video that you posted is, yeah, obviously not go closer to the kittens. Um, but if we're going in that direction, do we just stop, especially for people that don't know what they are, what could we do better as hikers and trail runners, like, to kind of stop these situations from happening? Yeah, so uh, um, basically you just want to like make sure the animal leaves the area as best as you can. Um, so I, were they like, were they, you know, just situated right by the trail or were they crossing the trail or what was, what was going on? Did they, you said they started to scatter in the different directions? Yeah. So when I approached like, cause I was coming down actually, there's a hill and mm -hmm. you see the, the hill I'm going up in the video. So I'm running down that. So I kind of like came to a 
a, a halt once I saw them. And once I kind of see that, once that I kind of stop, yeah, there's rocks falling, kind of like rocks in the, in the mm-hmm. dust and stuff. And that's when the two cubs went, one went left and one went right. And then there's still two more cubs. And that's when one didn't see me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I mean, the best case situation, honestly, is probably for you to back up and leave the area for a little bit and then maybe come back really slowly. And when you come back, um, like make a lot of noise, like, like even in bear country, they recommend people sing to themselves and talk to themselves when they're hiking. So the animal has a lot of warning that you're coming, but yeah, ideally you might've wanted to back up slowly and maybe waited 10, wait 10, 15 minutes, maybe even longer and um, give the animals a chance to, to vacate the area. Um, If, if they're not moving and you don't have to go that way, um, then obviously I wouldn't do that. If you absolutely do have to go that way, I would try to go around them as far as I possibly could. And again, make noise the whole time. Um, clap your hands and and watch them the whole time um, as well, um, and okay. make sure that they're they're not you know starting to come towards you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> cool. Another question I had was I've I, a lot of people have told me to get bear spray. Does bear spray hurt animals? Good question. I mean, I think it temporarily impacts them. I don't, I don't think it hurts them long-term because they wouldn't have um, that. They wouldn't have the spray to like kill bears on an instant, but I'm not sure of the effects on other animals. I'm sure it's just a temporary sting kind of like maces for us. Um, I mean, honestly though, I just think your chances of interacting with a mountain lion are just so, so rare that most people don't have to worry about it. But um but again, yeah, I would probably, if it makes you feel safer, then, then go ahead and do it. Um, but yeah, it's just so, so rare. You're more likely yeah. to interact with a bear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> now, kind of yeah, you, can, you can definitely do it. Yeah, what I've thought about now is I'm just going to be carrying a whistle. Yeah, that's a good idea too. There's, I, I was a lifeguard when I was a lot younger. And so there's like the, the Fox 40 whistles and they're, they're loud things. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a really good idea and something really easy to, to carry. And it's small run. because, yeah, I mean, what I was carrying with me at the time was just my handheld water bottle and it's strapped to my hand. And that's kind of what I had my phone in and my goo, some extra calorie thing. And yeah. So, I mean, I think mm-hmm. a whistle would be very easy to clip on there. Yeah. Okay, well, um, cool. And, and thanks again for letting me talk to you and help spread the word that these are some amazing cats. And mountain lions are actually, um, they're, they're common in the United States. They're not an endangered species or anything, but like all predators, they're more vulnerable to, um, to declines and, and um, local extinction so we do have to learn to live with them and i'm really glad that you learned from this experience and that you're you're um, interested in and promoting the conservation of these animals yeah thanks thanks for having me i'm glad you were able to talk to me (laughs) (laughs) okay thank you